experiment, right? Where they had this mouse, and from day one, the mice, they had like a screen in front of them. They never went anywhere, they had the screen in front of them, and they had like a ball they could run on, right? And this ball would move, where it would run, and to the mice, that was their reality. It sounds so stupid, but reality is relative to people, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's literally their reality. If they wake up from a dream and they kill their wife and stuff like that, do you know what I mean? It, it's, it, it's all really relative. If I could live my, my perfect life, um, but it's virtual, but I don't know the difference, then, then what's, what's, what's the problem? You know, I was thinking about that in the shower today, actually. I'm thinking to myself, man, you know, if I could sit here in my virtual reality thing, my mind doesn't know the difference. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, say, for example, we lived an existence like that, and it meant that everyone took up ten times less in, in resources. You know, then it would be the most logical and sensible thing to do. Um, so I think we are going to be entering a bit of a time where, where it's going to get very, very strange. It's going to get very, very strange. Everyone you ever knew or, or loved or wished to love ended up here. A fractal of light looping infinitely in a kaleidoscope of energy and information. We've always sought to recreate reality in, in an attempt to understand it. Through our art, our literature will reflect what is real. We externalize, record, and output reality endlessly, tirelessly. We create new realities to understand what? Ourselves? Something deeper? Now, we look to replace nature, to replace God, aiming not to echo reality, but to create our own. This is an entirely inevitable process. We're looking at the Model T Fords of virtual reality. Our resolution is low, the headgear is uncomfortable, but what's exciting about this is the promise of the technology. It's coming out of the labs and into our laps, almost. The technology that's called virtual reality has been around in the 40s and was mostly found in huge the military research league. institutions. The human need for escapism is only too natural. Oh, but we like it this way. Really, we do. I guess you could call them digital ghosts, but... The reality is, this is all an apparition. You actually enter the uh, virtual environment. Instead of being on the outside looking in, uh, in virtual reality, you're actually on the inside looking out. A placeholder of a physical existence long forgotten. A museum of all there ever was, and all that will ever be. You might argue that they are not real, that they are false worlds, empty experiences. But if the brain can't distinguish between them, who can say? If you label them all as hollow, well, where does that leave the real world? No, to our brains. The physical world, it's no more tangible than any one of those artificial realities. We exist in them all. 
through our waking perception, our consciousness. Every single facet of the physical world in which we exist, with which we grapple daily, is just the result of our brain assimilating the data gathered by our senses into something it can comprehend. It assumes a reality. And so, through understanding and control of their senses, it would be possible to feed people simulations of real inputs, creating for them whole, incontestable, living worlds. And once in such a world, it would be impossible to distinguish between that and true reality. I mean, what would you do if you were dreaming? Pinch yourself. Right. And if you pinch yourself in this reality, and it hurts just so much, to just the right degree, and it, ex and it hurts in this reality, and in that reality, and all the other realities, well, pretty soon the whole concept of true reality is going to start to sound like something of a myth. There's this big underlying philosophical issue here, which is which you could characterise as to do with computability. The, you know, perhaps only in principle, but that technology of some form or other could compute anything that happens in the universe, including us, including our minds, including our free will, including everything that we do and everything that we experience. That's how could you, could you compute consciousness? And in a way, if that could happen, VR, that's going to suddenly be a much more serious, ish, you know, contender, if you like. When we have exhausted our world to a burnt out husk, what will we do then? 20th century paradigm was, well, we'll go out and find new planets, new resources, boldly to go where no man, etc. But if your nephew or niece already prospecting for diamonds and platinum, some verdant virtual paradise, tending to bizarre pets or diving for pearls. Sure, if, if, if you want to see Mars, well, they'll build one for you in 20 minutes because there is nothing there. It's a vast desert of red dust and it holds no more interest than the moon's grey desert or, or Venus's sea of inert gases. I mean, it's no excitement. We will create new worlds to inhabit perfect on a sensory level. Hyper-reality, full of beings beyond human, above nature, post-human deities. So for this generation, the answer will not be in travelling outwards, but in voyaging in Europe. Our very being, projected infinitely across what was once called the internet. <laughs>